It's great to see you all here, um, especially two new writers to, uh, to ITV and to television, which I think is a, a remarkable achievement, and we will focus on that uh, a little bit more in just a minute. But first of all, location, location, location. Mark, can you tell me why you were so passionate about setting a story in Hong Kong? Um, I think it was partly because we haven't really seen one set in Hong Kong in this country, and... Um, considering our shared history with Hong Kong, what with uh, the handover um, in <clears throat> back in 1997. Um, it was coming up to the 20th year anniversary um, from that when we conceived the show, and we just thought, you know, this could be really interesting. It could be uh, a window to a whole new culture, and, um, yeah, I mean, we just thought it, it looks beautiful. I mean, we hadn't been at that point, but um, seen loads of photos <laughs> of it. Um, <laughs> we thought this would be really cool. Um, and so get free holiday. Uh, and yeah, so that was it, really. That was the inception. You've, you'd never been to Hong Kong before you wrote this drama? No. no. <laughs> yeah. we ha well, we ha actually, that's not quite true. We wrote the pilot, and then um, after that, um, the good folks at Two Brothers, Jack and Harry, they paid for us to go and... Uh, do like a week's kind of tour around uh, Hong Kong and we got to see the sites and uh, meet loads of interesting people so that definitely so helped. So next, next drama pitch for Bali? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, can, <laughs> exactly. I, can see, I can see where you're going here. Paul, from your point of view, um, when you took the project on board, was it um, one of your red lines that it had to be set out there in terms of not just a few exteriors but actually going lock, stock and barrel and doing some serious filming over there? Um, it was already going to be set there. I knew it was going to be there, I knew it was going to be shot there, which um, of course was really, you know, but obviously very important to the to the show because if you should set it here, if you shot it here outside, people would know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so we it, did shoot quite a lot. Of Hong no, we did. Kong yeah, here, we did shoot bits of Hong Kong here, <laughs> but hopefully you won't see. But I think if we shot it, you know, had to, if it was it was so about Hong Kong, the, the, and Hong Kong is such a sort of character in itself that I think we had to go there was without question. And is it a director's dream in terms of um, a, a, a kind of landscape that looks so vibrant, so beautiful, so colourful to be able to bring that to life on the small screen? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it's nice to be employed. It's nice to be, um, you know, and obviously itself, just seeing it and just seeing it on the screen now, you know, it's it's wherever you point the camera is lots of different <laughs> types of life it's very it can be either incredibly vibrant and beautiful and, and and amazing and it can also be kind of grimy and dirty and horrible and i think it just had everything so yeah I'm very lucky to have been able to go out there john and amelia it's a hard job but somebody's got to do it what were the the highs first of all and also perhaps some of the lows of of being away from home for that long because you you're out there for about two months is that right in terms of yeah. the filming schedule yeah maybe longer i think um maybe it felt longer yeah <laughs> <laughs> um it was an amazing place to uh, visit and see i've never been before um so it was one of the you know one of the reasons why i wanted to do it it was you know i've never uh, never been to china so it was uh, that was a big deal and it, yeah it was um it was a long way to go and a, a long time to be away from home, but um, that's our job, isn't it? So yeah, we, it was it was a busy shoot, so not a lot of time to be bored. You had so. no time off, no. like nothing. No, barely. You were barely. non-stop. No. But what was really weird is that we would shoot the exterior of Hong Kong, uh, of Hong Kong um, and then two months later we were shooting the interiors, but back here in England. So we had a scene, didn't we, where I arrived at the door in Hong Kong and we shot my side of it yeah. and then we shot Katie's side <laughs> in Ealing <laughs> and had to remember exactly what the mood was, exactly where we were standing, exactly what we were looking at and, and so that was quite a challenge throughout the whole thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of knocking on doors in Hong Kong and walking <laughs> through them three months later in London. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> without a suntan yeah, without in a case. suntan trying to look hot <laughs> yeah in, in, in London in the winter it was well. crazy yeah <laughs> well how challenging from a director's point of view was that Paul that you know that kind of totally different uh, cultures and um, environments to film in um yeah I mean the thing it was it was obviously kind of crazy but by the time we came here back here uh, to film in London I think my brain was pretty scrambled anyway and I think that there were just a lot of good people telling me where we were and where we were going to be. Um, 
And I think, to be honest, um, Max, the production designer and the whole crew, yeah. did such an amazing job because, the, you know, just looking at it now, obviously, I know where the joins are. But I think it's kind of seamless, um, which is a testament to everyone who worked on it, I think. So, I mean, it's difficult. There's loads of difficult things. But it was, you know, it's a challenge to see how you can make it work, I think. Uh, John, to me, you'll always be Eddie in Wonderland. But unlike me, oh, you have moved on <laughs> to many, uh, many a famous role. Why did you go for this particular part? And um, we are learning from the first few minutes that you're in it a lot. So for all the John Sim fans out there, this is this is good news. It's a tiny woo out there. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they'll be uh, woofing by the uh, by the end of it. But yeah, in terms of was it the script? Was it the storyline, the plot? Um, lots of different elements <clears throat> coming to it, really, to, to, to um, you know, uh, take on a job for that long. Um, a lot of elements have to come into it. But yeah, mainly the script. Um, I read the first three eps. Um, was really intrigued about what would happen. I, like everybody, I wanted to know what, what happens to this guy. Um, and was really intrigued about the character and. Um, you know, having to deal with what he has to deal with and being a, in a foreign land. And I found that very intriguing. And, and of course, you know, Paul was attached and I loved uh, London to Brighton. I was a big fan of his work. And I, as, as we got further along, I knew that um, Amelia was going to be in it. And we'd never worked together unbelievably. Um, we'd, we'd tried really early on. Nearly happened. Like 20 years ago. 20 years ago. We were yeah. meant to work on a play together. It was close, yeah. The Collector. The Collector. Yeah where we were going to be stuck in some kind of basement together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't happen, did it? <laughs> <laughs> so we need to know who bailed on that one. How did it not happen? I don't, I can't How remember. did that not happen? I don't know. It was a really good idea. The I John Fowles had, yeah. novel, yeah. And we had a meeting about it and everything. I think probably you got lots of work. No, it was. I'm sure it was. <laughs> 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 anyway, it was good. This has yeah. came up as an opportunity. Because I think from uh, from my point of view as a viewer seeing the first episode, Amelia, we don't see too much of you. But given it's you, That's I it. am presuming... That's yeah, all I do. Like in there for five minutes. Uh, presumably, uh, presuming it's not, of course, a cameo role. So we see a lot more of your character as the storyline develops and becomes much more integral to the, the relationship with Jonah and, and mm. the storyline itself. Well, I think Jonah's quite dependent on Sally um, being out there in this foreign place with this situation and turns to Sally because she's the first person he meets and she's caring about his situation and wants to help. And so they, their lives become intertwined through it and they have a slightly sort of mirrored situation as well. Um, and uh, yes, so there is more of Sally to come. Good news. And as an actor, was there any reservations from your point of view that you were working with these two newbies, the, the directing, the, sorry, the, the writing debut of, of Mark and Johnny? No, absolutely. I read, I, like John, I read the scripts and just, I, I read the first three scripts and was like, I want to know what happens next. I met with Paul and um, for an audition and learned every single line there was to learn. And he was like, okay, that's enough. And I was like, no, can I do the next scene now? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I did all of them. And then, um, and then just was very, very excited by the script, by working with Paul. I'd seen London to Brighton and Murdered for being different and then working with John. And then got to meet Kate as well. Okay, so Mark and Johnny, I need you to take me back because presumably this has been a project in your world for a few years now. To the moment you get the call to say, yeah, we've got some actors who are keen to work on this project. <coughs> you may or may not have heard of them. You've got Amelia Fox and John Sim. What was that? Were you together when you, you heard that those, those two leads had been secured? Uh, yeah, we were, I think. I think we were in Jack and Harry's office, and they gave us the news, and we asked for the news again. And <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we were, just, we were just blown away. We were absolutely delighted when you guys came on board. Yeah, um, we couldn't really picture anyone like more suited. Yeah. You have to no. say that because they're... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, in terms of, did it add to the pressure because this was your writing debut or did it give you that kind of um, feeling of this, this is going to work because we've got this brilliant director and, and these two great actors? 
Definitely the latter. Yeah. No, we, we figured we could just stop trying because they would pick up the slack and, you know, <laughs> it would be all No, it means it suddenly becomes real when you start hearing these names being thrown around and you're like, oh, no, we've got to really, like, knuckle down and get this done. But it wasn't just us. You know, we had some other fantastic writers on this as well who um, kicked in some amazing ideas and helped make the show what it is. Yeah. Katie, I must uh, bring you in now, and, and much like uh, Amelia's character, Sally, we, we see you a bit in this episode, but I'm presuming we will see a lot more of you, and presuming that uh, there will be uh, a relationship that has to develop between your character and, and Jonah. Mm -hmm. um, in the first episode, as you've just seen, uh, you have this, we are introduced to you as a character, and then there's the reveal about why you are relevant to the storyline. So there's that, it's one of the big moments of the first episode, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, without giving anything away, um, she's quite integral to the story, obviously. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a really exciting part to play. Um, there's just so much, there's so much to her, you know, there's so much complexity. And, um, you know, at the same time, she is just, uh, teenager who's going through a very traumatic experience um, meanwhile she's obviously a social activist um, and yeah there's there's a lot to unravel um. yeah and in, in terms of the, the title strangers my initial assessment when first watching it was it was to do with how you can not know the person that you're married to and they have this completely separate life on the other side of the world but Presumably, without giving anything away, we also find out that you presumably didn't know about the woman that was your mother. Yeah, I think um, she has to like grapple with that um, in later episodes because, like you said, we don't see much of her story at the beginning, um, and I think it is uh, it's quite difficult to know as an actor how you would kind of approach that kind of situation because it's so unique and um, yeah so I, yeah it was quite it was quite interesting to to try and explore the different ways of of playing that kind of situation yeah, yeah. absolutely and I, I think in terms of um, if we go back to the the fact that uh, a, a person doesn't know their spouse at all um, from a writing point of view, presumably you can only bring that to life because it is believable because we do know that it does happen in real life that people have these completely separate lives because otherwise we just wouldn't believe that John's character would land in a country thinking he's going to take his wife's body home and then find out that, that she had a whole different life going on. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, um, I'm very happily married and I don't have... So he says. <laughs> That's not confirmed. <laughs> Um, so he thinks. Yeah, so he thinks. Um, Actually, that idea came uh, as a consequence of meeting with Jack and Harry, um, and so questions should be raised about them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we just thought, obviously, it's a, a sort of fascinating question that I think, um, you know, if you're you know, awake in the night, can't sleep, your mind goes to strange places, you wonder, what would, what, what would happen if one day I found out that yeah, this entire secret life existed right under my nose. And yeah, we just loved the idea of that and talked about it a lot and mm. felt it would weave into the story uh, as we'd sort of come up with it at that point really nicely. And it's tricky to talk about because it would give a lot away about what happens in the series, but um, needless to say, hopefully all the themes and the yeah, character revelations, yeah, fingers crossed, they entwine and tell a deeper story in theory. Yeah. John, how hard was it to play? Because you've obviously got to come across as somebody who is is not naive but wholeheartedly believed in in the the character of Meg and the, the that you have this relationship with this person yeah. and then you are blindsided by by what you discover as soon as you get out there <coughs> um, well that was the intriguing thing um, there's a thing that attracted me to it really is how would how would one react to that situation that news I mean it's beyond belief isn't it and but, but it is believable. That's why I was intrigued by the script. Um, how would he react in this situation? How would anyone react? He's, he's, um, you know, he's not stupid, but he's, he's not Indiana Jones. You know? So he's got to try and work out what happened, and he has to be strong. And he, uh, yeah, that, that was the challenge as an actor, to, to bring that, uh, you know, that extraordinary 
story to life and, and try and make it believable. Mm. And, and for, for, to try and get the audience to believe and share in his horror of, of, of what's happened. Yeah, and you also got get to play um, in the, the flashback scenes opposite Dervla Kerbrin as well, which, uh, again, another massive name for you guys to work with, which must have been brilliant from your point of view, albeit presumably fleeting. And, uh, yeah, not, no, it's fantastic. Not in Hong Kong. Dervla had a very uh, uh, difficult job because she was out in Hong Kong. Did you see her? Yeah. Did you see her? In the lift. Right, in the lift. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard she was there, and so, so we, we didn't meet at all. And so I spent three months trying to find out what had happened to Dervla Kerwin. <laughs> <laughs> really very upset by the whole thing, and I'd never even met her. So, um, <laughs> and we filmed all the other stuff when we got back, but it was the stuff that we did film, it was an absolute joy, because uh, amazingly, I'd never worked with her either. So it was, um, yeah, it's a... Uh, and you filmed around the corner from my house. Yeah, apparently And that's did, the right? only time that filming has ever happened really, really that close to my house and I had nothing to do with it. You and that was your house. that day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, in terms of uh, the project being your debut, um, how much, because uh, you guys are new to the television writing scene, but um, you had this other award-winning duo in, in Hack, uh, Harry and Jack Williams behind you, the production company behind Strangers. So... How much of a conversation was it between you two as the creatives on the project and those two with, with their incredible history of, of The Missing and, and Liar and, and Fleabag? Um, well, it was a sort of ongoing conversation. And for us, it was really like sort of joining writing university because um, we're self-taught. We never have been formally trained. And so when we came to try and take on a story that's complicated, the guys you need are Jack and Harry. And so, yeah, we would discuss pretty much everything with them, wouldn't we? And yeah, I mean, from inception, when we came up with the idea and we met them in a pub to <laughs> discuss it, um, it changed so much. I mean, you wouldn't even recognise it due to ongoing conversations, discussions, you know, their wealth of experience. Um, it, it was kind of like writing university in that sense, as Johnny said. It's like we learned so much mm -hmm. over the course of this. And, um, yeah, I mean, who better to learn from than, like, the guys who created The Missing, right? So you, you guys, you met at university. Neither of you were studying anything to do with, with writing, with English, with um, politics and geography, right? So you go off and do your own careers. How do you come back together to form this partnership and what everyone hopes, I'm sure, is, is the start of a, a brilliant writing career? Career is a very strong word to where I was <laughs> at. Um, uh, no, you, you go, you start. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Johnny and I met at university, and uh, we always did kind of creative projects together. And then I left to work in Parliament for a year, and Johnny studied a master's, and um, I just started writing a script because I thought stupidly that I could write the British West Wing, which is really embarrassing to admit <laughs> now. Um, and then I was working in Parliament, and I realised how cynical and uh, backstabby everyone is, and I was like, no, we can't have President Bartlett. Not in this country. Um, <laughs> not someone who's so good. Um, so... We wrote, ended up writing a kind of comedy set in Parliament that wasn't like the thick of it, but it was, um, it was much more of a comedy than a drama. And I, I sent it to Johnny um, over email, and he rewrote it, and kind of we just batted it around for fun, and we never thought we could do this as a career. It never occurred to us. We, don't, we didn't know anyone in the industry. I think it was a Word document at that point, wasn't it? Probably embarrassing, yeah, yeah. or pages or something. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, anyway, we kind of got it to this position where we thought it looked pretty cool and sent it to the Red Planet Picture Prize competition. Um, and we got through to the final round and no further, but then we, we fooled um, several agencies into talking to us off the back of that. Yeah, and got um, our wonderful agent, Katie. Hey. <laughs> um, who is still our agent. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of went from there. So we jumped in the deep end and spent most of the next few years floundering. Yeah, we spent <laughs> seven years floundering. Just to it's still an incredible story in, 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 in terms of the... the, the pace has been relatively quick to to go from nothing to something as a you know a blockbuster part of ITV's autumn schedule take me through how you actually get the plot and the words onto the page because you you work in separate places don't you so yeah who's I can't in stand charge? Him, so we can't really be together <laughs> for longer than this actually <laughs> um, no we should we, have separated you I know why am I not I, I asked um, <laughs> No, what we do generally is we just talk on Skype pretty much all day and we have uh, Google Docs or WriterDuo, which is kind of a screenwriting software online where you can both um, 
work at the same time on it and we just talk and talk and um, bore each other to death and uh, hopefully eventually something will come out of it and then kind of rolls that way writing although we tend to split up um, writing duties once we've talked it to death I'll take one act Johnny will take another act he'll we'll both write them separately swap them over rewrite each other and stuff like that do you ever that. really disagree uh, no, we don't actually, weirdly. Yeah. No, we did. When we first started, we agreed we both had the power of veto. So if one of us said no to an idea, the other just had to go along with it, and we had to come up with a third way. And there's only a couple of times we had to do that. Mm. Um, and normally, it results in something better. So um, Yeah, it always yeah. results in something better. Normally, the other person is able to talk the other person out of, like, why they've made <laughs> such a terrible <laughs> line of dialogue or a rubbish joke. Yeah, yeah seriously, some of the early drafts of our stuff is awful. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't imagine, though, that that moment where you you feel as one writer you've nailed a line of dialogue or a scene, and then the other guy sitting in a room miles away just goes, "Nah, don't like that. Delete, <laughs> return." And uh, how? Because you've just got to you've just got to trust each other, right? Yeah, you've I, got to swallow it. Basically. I have a document I've saved all of my favourite lines in. I read them to myself. Should probably <laughs> delete them. <laughs> <laughs> Does it send you to sleep at yeah. night? No. <laughs> Um, it is. It is. Sometimes it's hard, but I think like it. It started off harder, and then you just get used to it. Yeah. You just get used to having your favourite line smashed, <laughs> and so it's like, it doesn't hurt anymore. Just numbed. Well, you actually told me you just sneak them back in later on yeah. in well, episode seven loud, when nobody notices. Yeah. Yeah. Not across that. I don't reread. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't bother to reread <laughs> stuff. He's so lazy. So. <laughs> what was it like for you to see your first episode? Come alive through the eyes of Paul and and using these guys. It was skills. amazing. It was so surreal. You just yeah, can't even like prepare yourself. You think you're going to have a certain reaction. You think you're going to be blown away, but it's more like you're just you can't believe that what you've done. Other people not only have liked, but have spent so much money and time and effort and committed to, and then you see it all put together by these like you know genius Paul and like the, the DP and the acting and. <coughs> The editing and everything and it's just like it's almost like watching someone else's thing you, your brain can't really I, my brain anyway can't really still can't really grasp that this is happening but I can't believe I'm up there <laughs> what about you Johnny dream, hmm? what about you in terms of just um, that <laughs> 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 I think I could avoid that one no pretty much the same what, one of the things that's so cool about um, screenwriting is that you're really just creating the blueprint and then you're handing it on to another series of storytellers and experts who mm. you know reinterpret and cut it up and put it back together and so, yeah, what, what we've seen is just, I guess, 10 times better than what we wrote, but not trying to be sort of self-deprecating in saying that. It's just part of the process, and that's why we were so delighted to have these guys on board, because, you know, it is a big deal handing something off, knowing that it's going to be changed. So you do want to know that you've got, yeah, excellent people taking that next step for you. But, yeah, like Mark says, it's, it's really hard to get your head around it. Um, we focused really a bit hard. on the fact that the, the strangers can refer to the relationship that people, you know, the character of Jonah uh, didn't know his, his wife's um, other life, but presumably, given your passion for politics and wanting to write the British West Wing, which please do at some point in, in your career, because we're, we're certainly missing the original, um, presumably you were keen to focus on this relationship between the UK and Hong Kong and... The, the history and also where we're at now. So did you do a lot of research on that side of it or was that stuff that you guys already knew? Um, no, we did a lot of research um, and uh, I guess both of us are very just interested in geopolitics and, and, and that subject. And I guess the, the, the theory with, with, with the show is that it, you know, it's an analogous story told through a family but of a broader you know, in international situation of Britain's colonial past, China's present and Hong Kong trying to determine its own future. And so ho you know, hopefully we've you know, told a version of that story through... Um, you know our characters at least that's that's the idea anyway mm -hmm. and yeah we, we did a lot of research a lot of um google street view to work out what hong kong looked like um but i suppose because geography may be the embarrassing subject to take but it does you know teach you a lot about the world and other places and i do have a you know, deep interest and in, uh, mark's political um passion meant that i su i guess we we knew a fair amount of the political backdrop didn't we yeah i think one of the things that um hopefully you have as a screenwriter, or well, most screenwriters, I think, have a lot, a very um, kind of shallow knowledge about lots of things, yeah. um, and that helps kind of pull together loads of ideas for a film or a TV show. So if you ask me loads about Hong Kong, I'm not going to really be able to tell you much. But I already knew I knew enough to know that the history uh, of our two countries with China and stuff was just absolutely fascinating and worked really well as a metaphor for a broken family. Mm. 
Okay, interesting. Uh, Amelia and, and John, uh, you're starring in um, another thriller, another conspiracy drama. Why do you think we've got an insatiable appetite, or seemingly insatiable appetite, for these this kind of genre at the, at the moment? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I get it. Well, they're like puzzles, aren't they? Yeah, they? It's entertainment, you know. I, I, that's what got me <clears throat> to say yes to the script because I wanted to know what happened next. And like with any good book, with any anything, you know, it's anything drama-wise. I think um, if you're into that kind of thing, then you have an ins insatiable appetite for for scripts like this. You know, um, it's thrilling. fun solving a mystery, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And solving it either along with Jonah as in this story, or if you're in the crime-solving things, then you're getting to see behind the scenes of crimes and how they're solved. So I think that's, you know, whenever I'm asked about thrillers and things like that, it's the so it's the audience to enjoy solving the mystery along with the characters. Yeah, and we always get cast as intense. Intense. So we've reached intense. an age, we discuss, where we're really <laughs> intense, <laughs> really traumatised. Traumatised, intense people. Cry yeah. quite a lot. Look moody and... Trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think John was always intense, weren't you? I can't remember a role where. Well, <laughs> we I haven't been we intense. Don't, we don't see many comedic performances. Many. Comedic no, performances unless it's on stage. No, they don't give them to me on TV. We're going for the lighter roles later in life. I'm looking forward to it. Both of you <laughs> together, definitely. That, that's like the deal breaker here. Paul, in terms of just um, the, the, just kind of exploring the relationship between um, the the two countries a bit more as well. Some of the uh, the dialogue dialogue in in the first episode, I'm presuming this continues, is a mixture between subtitles and and dialogue. Is that uh, does that present a challenge in itself, or does that just give authenticity to the drama that's being created um it's only a challenge if you can't read i think to be <laughs> honest but i think that no but that's you know because realistically it's set in hong kong ideally you know you'd have as much authenticity of it as possible i think you know i know lots of people who uh my son speaks uh german to his mum and mixture of english and german all the time so i know that it, you know certainly in relationships and family people do sort of dip in and out of two languages and um but i think the idea you know we have to have it looks stupid if they don't speak in cantonese mm. so it was very important to have that in there um but i think we tried we've been as authentic as we can in terms of how cantonese people are speaking mixtures um i hope so obviously <laughs> Katie, how was that for you in terms of the scenes with your father? Because that's the relationship that we're talking about in, in terms of in bilingual households. There is that mixture of the two languages and it's a very kind of um, almost organic process that you go from one to the other. It isn't kind of a, a thing that right on Thursdays we'll talk this yeah. language and on, on Fridays <laughs> we'll move into the other one. Um, I definitely fought to speak as much Cantonese as possible, I think, um, but obviously knowing that it is for a Western audience, um, I understand that, you know, you have to have a balance between the two. Because, um, you know, as Katie, um, I don't see my parents that much. Um, and when I do, I do actively make a choice to speak to them in Cantonese, because mm -hmm. I think it's really important to, to try and maintain it. Um, so it was such an opportunity to be able to use it um, doing this show. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, from from just watching it one because I haven't seen the rest, uh, I think it, it's pretty authentic the way that it's uh, come across. Yeah, and yeah. as an actor, how hard is it to intervene in that process to kind of say, do you know what? I really think this would be better if um, there was more Cantonese between the two characters because it's a a tough line, isn't it, to kind of to, yeah. to walk? I suppose. I think you just have to find a good reason as to why you're speaking whichever language you choose. Um, and I, I guess for, for my character, it was a, a way of dealing with um, her mother's death. Um, so, you know, in my mind, um, I was speaking Cantonese when, you know, maybe I wanted to have a more of a relationship, like a close relationship with the father. But then if he was being dismissive or whatever, then I would kind of resort to English. So mm. it was just... Yeah, just finding different reasons to yeah. 
to speak different, yeah, whichever language they chose. So presumably that goes along with each scene to, to how you're playing it, to whether you think at that point you want to say, no, I think this would probably yeah. be better in Cantonese or this is fine in English and, uh -huh. and that's part of the character's portrayal. Um, Mark and Johnny, what was it like in terms of when you all the kit of parts were together and you started filming and you were hearing the dialogue come out of the cast's mouths. Were, were you very close to the dialogue in terms of you were very precious about it or if there were moments where you just thought, that doesn't sound quite right, Joni wouldn't quite say that or Sally wouldn't say <coughs> it like that. Were you then leaping in and, and saying, no, let's change this? No, not really. I mean, definitely when you hear things, they're not said as you imagined, but more often than not, you're like, oh, that's really interesting. That's a really interesting way to uh, interpret the way, like the reading of that line. Um, and with, you know, this caliber of actor and actress, you're not like, you're not gonna get any bum notes really. So you're getting just better, probably better than what you're thinking because it's done in a completely fresh way. And it's like, mm -hmm. a, it's like hearing something anew. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And do you think that um, that might change for you guys as your career progresses in terms of you might be more precious about your body of work and less kind really of open egotistical. to... Because you, you described yeah. yourself as storytellers and then the rest of the panel storytellers in, in their individual roles. Do you think you might be more kind of like control freaks when you get more kind of experience and, and kind of you know, the, the, the credit for the productions that you create? Or do you think you'll always be open-minded? It's, it's really refreshing. I hope always open-minded. I hope always open-minded, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And but we, we were very conscious during this process that, you know, we knew the least of everyone, if, mm. if that makes sense. So we were here to, to learn and to be really respectful of um, yeah, what we were hearing. <laughs> and yeah, I hope we don't change, um, but you know, um, who knows? Yeah, so we who could knows. become awful. Don't change. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, were there any reservations on your part taking a project that was written by the new kids on the block? Uh, no, no, not at all. I think, um, you know, obviously when you, you know, you read a script and that makes you want to do the job. And I mm. think that, you know, I, I read it obviously without ever, without meeting the, um, them both. So for me, it was always a script that sort of got me to want to do it, um, you know, and I think it's so. Whether someone's written twenty times or one time, it doesn't. I'm not fussed mm. as long as it makes you want to sort of take part in it. I, I think that's good enough. <laughs> it was very, very crazy. <laughs> um, I think there's just like with the crew as well. There's a very it's kind of different work ethic. Um, like some things they were incredibly fast and they were incredibly, uh, you know, but everyone had, no one had individual jobs really. It was just a mass of people. It was like a horde of ants <laughs> that when something needed doing, the mass would come and just, uh, it would be fixed. Um, and also there's so many people there that you'd be filming and you'd get plebs with cameras literally right next to you, <laughs> not, no, not sort of, not caring that you're filming. So there's so much footage of just people gawping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not even like, just not even like trying to hide gawping, like just <laughs> full on. <laughs> but um, you know, the, the bottom line is it's, it, for what, for the difficulties that were there, you know, there was also, you know, so many more positive things about it. And, I, you know, I'd film back there in a second. Um, you know, so I had, it's one of those things where as you work there and a bit longer, you get really pissed off. It's like, God, I just want someone to be quiet. You can, they'd never be quiet. They wouldn't be quiet ever. And, um, <laughs> but then, you know, and you finish, and, oh man, I miss it there. I miss, I miss going back to do there. But being, when we came back to England and it was like, that was amazing because <laughs> you'd literally say, guys, can you be quiet, please? Yeah. <laughs> and it would be like that. It was just, yeah, bonkers. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I love a play Nikki Alexander and, and having played her for so long, there is a sort of luxury of the familiarity of knowing her and also knowing the people that I'm working with, and so you take more risks, probably. Um, 
within the seven months of filming, but it does mean that in the other five months, it's um, anything which is as different from Nikki Alexander as possible is very appealing, and certainly Sally is very different. Um, and I think a script like this, which was you know so exciting to read and wanting to know what would happen after the first three episodes that we got given, what would happen to them, um, and then finding out who that there are sort of quite a few layers to Sally, um, and she is not crime solving, which is a good thing, I think, in, <laughs> in five months off from uh, Silent Witness. So something, you know, Strangers really, really appealed to me as a story for all those reasons. Um, and yes, I like doing as many different things as possible. I'm doing a documentary at the moment, which is about Jack the Ripper, um, so that's sort of looking at the crime, uh, looking at crimes from a different angle. So yes, definitely choosing things uh, which are as far away from Nikki is a good thing to do in, in the five months off. Basically, you know, I, obviously I'd never, I'd never been to Hong Kong, and I think the DP had been Eben. You know, it's, you're fortunate because there's so much of Hong Kong where you literally just point, and it's already cinematic there. Um, and that's not to do Eben a disservice because obviously he made some, you know, he did some amazing lighting um, and really sort of, but blending in with such, with the place. So it was again, seamless. Uh, but I think the, the great thing about Hong Kong is it is such a visually and vibrant uh, place that we're fortunate enough to make it look really good. I mean, but it looks really good anyway. So. I think, you know, Eben did a fantastic job. Um, and it was so quick as well, so even that, he, he worked out that. But I basically didn't want to make, you know, there was everyone was showing me references of Hong Kong movies and stuff like that. I was like, well, I don't really want to see them. I might as well just go there and do our own thing. Um, because otherwise you'd just be doing that. And the thing is, Hong Kong doesn't change, so it was like, let's just make our drama in Hong Kong and try and make it look not shit. And then if it didn't, <laughs> and then, you know, there were moments that worked really well, and I think that's down to him and the city. Thank you. It is so bright out there all the time as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah. the lights are such a huge feature at night, and the colours as mm. well, so it does sort of light itself in many of those scenes, doesn't it? Yeah, it, 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 literally wherever you looked, it was just cra It was really, you know, I think really beautiful. Um, the, you know, the neon charade that covers up so much crap, probably. But, um, you know, being serious, you know, it's, it's obviously it's very appealing to the eye and distracts you from some of the probably the worst things that go on there. But that's for a different screening. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, uh, no. I, I, I arrived with my family, so I was, uh, <laughs> I was tooled up, man. I was like, you know, I was with my um, people. So I was, I was, they were there for the first two weeks and then they left me. Um, and that, and then it, and then it got a bit discombobulating, yeah. But uh, I, do you know what? I didn't have time to uh, think about any of that because I was fighting jet lag and learning lines and getting ready to start filming. And I was really excited about it. <clears throat> and it was a really incredible shoot out there. It was like, you know, um, once in a lifetime experience maybe. And it was a really interesting place to film. Um, and we saw a lot of it. We went all over, went to Macau and everywhere. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean it's really crowded, and and it's a assault on the senses, it, 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 the noise and the smell and every, everything is completely completely different to here. So, it was um, it was great for the part. Yeah. I never get noticed in England, and definitely didn't get noticed in Hong Kong for for work reasons. They're just fascinated by the uh, by a film camera. So that's really what's. Uh, what they're looking at and why they might be looking at you, not for necessarily the projects that you've done, except for the one cafe around the corner from the hotel, who I went and ordered a coffee, a latte, and the coffee arrived. It took forever to make, um, and it finally arrived, <laughs> and it had a picture of, uh, I think, me as Nikki Alexander on the top of it. <laughs> that's why it had taken so long. But that's the only time. But no, it, um, <laughs> um, they're just interested in filming and what you're doing. And, and we did quite a lot of sort of guerrilla style filming, didn't we? Where we were just 
on the loose, running, um, uh, you know, through the streets and through markets and things like that. And so there, there were good natural reactions as well of people being surprised and what's going on and then their fix. And that's when it really worked, I think, for the show as well. But it, it, it is an extraordinary experience landing out there. I just remember feeling I can't breathe because the pollution was so great out there. It takes you a while to acclimatize. And we were doing, I think on the first day I was filming with you, we were on the top of this skyscraper building, massive neon lights, screens, with jet lag, and yeah, it was scene like they just shown, isn't it? That yeah, was the your bar. first day, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was in the first episode. I felt we like I was on a roller coaster all the time, like going up and down, and I could just hear you talking to me, but it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was really odd. Yeah. But then you said that you've been through that, everyone went through it for about two or three weeks, and also the difference that the humidity and but it is such a beautiful place, and it is such an amazing place of old and new and east and west, and this very crowded, you know, it sort of you it takes you a while to get used to, and then you go out to the islands, and it's just so quiet, and there are no cars, and you walk around the fishing villages, and so it's such a pe place of extremities, and that's what makes it so exciting, I think. And, you know, it's now in this very ex interesting, fascinating, politically changing time, so it was a great time to be out there. They're here, right? I'm yeah, there's loads of them here. I mean, you know, you have auditions and, you know, you see loads of people and, you know, sometimes it boils down to if they're, wh whether, they're ugh, whether they are England-based or Hong Kong-based as well. Um, but, you know, like anything, you look for the people who you're going to get on with and who can do it. And then, but then a lot of the time, you know, it's left to Gary Davey and, and the casting department because we were away, so we'd just get tapes of people or sometimes not even see a tape. I mean, there were actually, there were a couple of extras uh, who were not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> you definitely have to do, you definitely have to explain things a few times to the point of like, it's kind of funny and it's almost a determined to get this person to walk in the right direction or open the door or not look in the camera. You're like, take 50. <laughs> but uh, no, we, you know, we've, uh, we're fortunate to have some really fantastic actors all, all round. And the whole crew, everyone, every, you know, it was really, there was no bad eggs. I had family who lived in Hong Kong, um, but I, I'd never been. Um, so I kind of was aware of it as, as a place and it always was fascinating. I was aware of it as well. No, you weren't. I had to explain. I had to point to Mark on a map where it was. Um, but um, uh, in, in terms of the, the sort of, well, I guess we, we've seen uh, you know, films like Infernal Affairs um, and Hard Boiled, which you know, we obviously love. And, and One Car Away movies. As well. Yeah, uh, uh, In the Moon for Love being a particular favourite. And so we, I guess that would be our, our sort of experience of Hong Kong before we actually went out there. Um, yeah, but um, I mean, the story didn't really start off with the location or any of no. the kind of underworld elements, it started off with a guy whose wife was killed in a seeming accident and then he unfolds this growing conspiracy and nothing makes sense and his shared past with her is an illusion and what does that feel like? And that is w where we're always trying to come in at on a drama. It's not like, would it be cool to shoot here or, or there? It's what's the heart of it? Where, where are the, where's the humanity there? Where's the universal emotions? Um, but adding Hong Kong to it was just a really awesome backdrop and not just a backdrop but like it allowed avenues of storytelling which you just yeah. couldn't have in other countries so it, the more it was ensconced in Hong Kong the more like it became like a character in the show itself I'd never I'd only I'd never didn't know who he was <laughs> um, <laughs> so Obviously, if you've seen The Mummy 3, <laughs> he's pretty good in that. Um, Anthony was such a pleasure to work with and such a really amazingly ace guy, uh, considering his English is not great. So he really had to work hard with a dialect coach to, um, to sort of, not just to get the words out, because it's, you know, Cantonese... I can't imagine anyone from our side, you know, when, when some of the actors had to learn Cantonese to say a line, it was just impossible. So the fact that he 
and others were learning to speak in English specifically for this. You know, and it's a real credit for them, I think. Um, he was recognized all the time because it was, it must have been great because obviously he was recognized out there and it's much easier for these guys to walk around because, you know, obviously he's the big star there and these guys are very well known here. And then every now and again when he came here, someone would be like, oh my God, that's Anthony Watt, <laughs> and spin out. But um, what a total pleasure. He's such a guy, he's such a great guy. And he's hardcore fucking martial artist. <laughs> <laughs> Which if so if you go near him, and take you out. <laughs> <laughs> what about for you, Katie, and, and perhaps John? working with oh he was great he was lovely i i didn't know who he was either but i i, I had seen um hard boiled and then i realized it was him um and then he told me it had been in i had seen films that he'd done um when i was younger uh and re then realized how, what a big star he was over there and he really is a big star over there he got recognized all the time um but he was he is such a lovely man he's very quiet he's very gracious and really hard working really brilliant actor and like Paul says, you know, for him to play a lot of that part in English was a real challenge. Um, <coughs> and so, yeah, hats off to him. He's he's brilliant. And Katie? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had, it was such a pleasure working with him, um, especially him playing my dad. Mm. Um, when, when I first found out that he was going to be playing my dad, um, I wasn't I wasn't sure who it was. I'd, I'd heard of the name before, and I remember I remember googling him, um, and being like, oh shit. <laughs> it's huge. Uh, so the first thing I did was like call my dad up and be like, "Guess who's with my dad?" So what was his reaction? It, he was like, he was really excited for me, um, and mm -hmm. I, I think from because I've watched a lot of kind of Cantonese like movies growing up, mm -hmm. but I didn't necessarily like know which ones that he was he was in that I'd seen. Um, but I just remember him playing like really intimidating kind of characters like gangsters. Um, so I, I was quite, I was quite scared, kind of quite nervous meeting him. And I remember Paul arranged a dinner um, for the, the both of us, um, and then you pissed off and went to play football and left me with him, <laughs> um, which was fun. Um, so that, yeah, that was. But but we got to know each other really well, uh, and he it turns out he's a big softy. So uh, yeah, he's 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 lovely and he's such an incredible actor and I learned a lot just from from doing you know having loads of scenes with him. We'll find out whether his character is or not uh, when the drama is released and we all get to see episode two and beyond sometime in the autumn schedule on ITV. Um, so uh, good luck with that with the project, especially uh, Mark and Johnny. Um, it being your your first offering, I'm sure, first of many. Um, I'd like to thank everyone on the panel, Mark, Johnny, Paul, John, Amelia, and Katie. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.